The Materials and Resources Credit category in LEED v. 4.1 for existing buildings aims to reduce the environmental impact of building operations. LEED system goals explain what LEED aims to achieve. The concepts within the Materials and Resources Credit category touch on many of these goals, but obviously focus most directly on promoting sustainable and regenerative material cycles. Here are the prerequisites and credits in LEED v. 4. As you can see, they all relate to two fundamental concepts purchasing and waste. In other words, what comes into the building and what goes out of the building. These are the two main areas where existing buildings can influence the impact of their materials. In LEED v 4.1, the prerequisites and credits related to ongoing waste are now evaluated through the waste performance prerequisite. Waste from facility maintenance and renovation is now only addressed in the policy prerequisite. There is no longer an associated credit. That leaves the prerequisites and credits related to purchasing which remain in LEED v 4.1. Let's review how these remaining credits have been updated. The ongoing purchasing and waste policy prerequisite has been revised and thus renamed to only include purchasing. In addition, this prerequisite no longer includes storage location requirements. Those are now covered under the new waste performance prerequisite. The categories within the prerequisite have been revised, renamed, and simplified. Lamps, toner cartridges, Hardwired and portable fixtures have been added to this prerequisite. Retail requirements for environmentally responsible sourcing of retail merchandise have also been removed. The facility maintenance and renovation policy remains largely unchanged, with only a new requirement to separate facility maintenance and renovation waste from ongoing waste. This policy relates to both purchasing and waste. Finally, the three LEED v4 purchasing credits have been consolidated into a single purchasing credit in LEED v 4.1. Let's take a quick look at this revised credit. This single credit has four options available. The thresholds within these options have been revised. The first three options now have a threshold of 50%, and option four now has a threshold of 15%. And compliance with this credit may now be demonstrated with a minimum of one month of purchases. Finally, Interiors Projects Only can earn up to four points for this credit through any combination of options, including up to two points each for option one and option two, by meeting a 75% rather than a 50% threshold. Let's explore how LEED v 4.1 addresses waste through the new performance prerequisite. This is one of the five performance scores that projects earn in LEED v 4.1. So what goes into the score and how can projects earn points from it? To generate the waste performance score, projects submit data on the quantity of waste produced and the quantity of waste diverted. This waste data must be collected for a full year. This can be done through ongoing tracking or conducting at least one waste audit during the year. The data must show both the weight of waste generated and the weight of waste diverted. The data must include both ongoing consumables and durable goods. In addition to the waste data, Projects must also retain supporting documentation for GBCI's review. This could include a waste hauler report, waste audit report, and a description of the methodology for measuring toward a conversion. To generate the waste performance score, projects input their waste data. Both generation and diversion are considered on a per-occupant basis and factor into the score. The less waste generated and the more waste diverted, the higher the score. The amount of waste generated has a bigger influence on the score than the amount of waste diverted. This reflects LEED's general hierarchy of reduction first, then diversion. We'll now consider a couple examples. The first project has a very high waste diversion rate, 95%, but they still generate a lot of waste, 20 pounds of waste per occupant per day. Compare that to a project with a very low diversion rate, only 10%. But this other project generates much less waste, only one pound of waste per occupant per day. The second project will achieve a higher score because ultimately they generate considerably less waste. Again, diverting waste is a great additional step, but it is secondary to the initial focus on generating less waste. As with each of the performance scores, projects earn a zero to 100 score to give an easy to understand snapshot of how the building is performing. To achieve certification, projects must earn a score of at least 40 out of 100 in each category, including waste. These 0 to 100 scores for each category are then weighted to reflect the contribution each category makes to lead system goals. 
the 0 to 100 waist performance score is weighted out of 8. So the required 40 out of 100 score corresponds to at least 3 points. Here is how the 0 to 100 waist performance score translates into lead points. As you can see, projects can earn up to 8 points in total. We've now reviewed the Materials and Resources Credit category in LEED v4.1 for existing buildings, which focuses on reducing the impact of materials both entering and leaving the building.